the trajectory of war in Europe is now shaping the race into space exploration. The war has shown that countries need to be prepared for the possibility of space being used for military purposes. Both the US and Russia have used their space capabilities for military purposes in the past and it is possible that other countries could do the same in the future. The war in Ukraine has disrupted supply chains and financial markets and it is possible that these disruptions could also affect space operations. Sovereign space stations would give countries more flexibility in the event of disruptions to space operations. It is against this backdrop that India too announced an ambitious plan to launch a space station before 2030. Dear viewers, I'm Lipak Shikurana from Study IQIS and you are about to embark on a journey of learning like no other. So sit back, grab a pen and paper and get ready to be inspired. Let's begin with a very basic question. What exactly are space stations and what advantages do they offer? Space stations represent spacecraft like structures designed to support human habitation in space for extended periods. Usually positioned in low Earth orbit, they also facilitate spacecraft docking. These stations serve as bases for diverse activities from resource mapping to surveillance, leveraging their unique vantage points to study Earth's weather, geography, oceans and atmosphere. Beyond this, they play a pivotal role in essential research, including investigations into the impacts of prolonged space travel on human physiology. With a growing interest in space tourism and global enthusiasm for space flights, space stations also possess the potential to be utilized commercially. In some instances, national space stations function as all-seeing observatories, enabling continuous monitoring of allies and adversaries alike. This has significant military implications as countries race to establish independent space stations, shaping both military and geopolitical landscapes. So which nations currently manage active space stations? At the moment, the International Space Station stands as the solitary operational and continuously inhabited space station. This collaborative venture involves five major space agencies, NASA, the European Space Agency, Russia, Roscosmos, Japan, JAXA and the Canadian Space Agency. However, Russia has decided to opt out of the ISS after 2024. The decision was made in response to sanctions imposed on Russia by the United States and its allies over the invasion of Ukraine. So having commenced operations in November 2000 at a cost of $100 billion, ISS is situated approximately 400 kilometers above Earth within Leo, encircling the planet every 90 minutes. Throughout its existence, the ISS has amassed noteworthy achievements in scientific exploration, poised to inform future forays into space. For example, in 2018, NASA's Cold Atom Lab achieved a milestone by generating a fifth state of matter, known as a Bose-Einstein condensate, in space. Bose-Einstein condensates are formed when bosons, which are particles with integer spin, are cooled to very low temperatures. At these temperatures, the particles lose their individual identities and begin to behave as a single entity. This state of matter is characterized by wave-like properties such as interference and diffraction. Bose-Einstein condensates can be used in quantum computing and precision measurements. Similarly, in 2016, a NASA astronaut sequenced DNA in the space environment for the very first time. It's expected that the ISS will finish its work by 2024 and come down into the South Pacific Ocean around 2031. This landing spot is called Point Nemo. In fact, Point Nemo is the oceanic pole of inaccessibility, also known as the remotest point on the Earth. The remoteness is on the count of its inaccessibility from any landmass. It is located in the South Pacific Ocean 
far from any shipping lanes or fishing grounds. This makes it a perfect place to dispose of spacecraft and other objects that have been launched into space. So, which countries are planning to build their own space stations? As the current International Space Station is approaching its end, countries are once again in a space race. While the US is trying to extend the ISS until 2031, countries like China, Russia and India have announced their plans to create their own space stations. Russia is also developing its own space station, planned to launch by 2025. Well, friends, China has made good progress with its space station. Tiangong, which should work for about 10 years, it will be in space until May 2023. So China started its manned space program in 1992 and aims to build its own space station called the China Space Station for long-term use. When ready, CSS will be a competitor to the ISS. In January 2022, the ISRO announced its plan to send a space station by 2030 as part of its Gaganyaan mission, India's first manned space mission. So what's the progress on India's space station? If all goes well, then by the end of 2024 or 2025, India should have its own astronauts in the space. ISRO's planned space station is projected to weigh around 20 tons. It's designed to be positioned 400 kilometers above the Earth within low Earth orbit and will serve as a living space for astronauts for up to 15 to 20 days. So the primary purpose is to conduct experiments in microgravity, including studying how weightlessness affects the human body. Developing a space station is the next step after a country successfully sends and brings back a crewed space mission. Hence, ISRO's plan is to begin building the space station after the success of the Gaganyaan mission. If this succeeds, India will be the fourth nation globally to both send a crewed space flight and have a space station. ISRO is actively working on perfecting the SPADEX technology, which is essential for the functionality of the space station. SPADEX is short for Space Docking Experiment. ISRO is working on a twin spacecraft mission to advance technologies in orbital rendezvous docking and formation flying. These developments have potential applications in human spaceflight, satellite servicing in space, and various other close proximity operations. So the SPADEX mission is a significant milestone in India's space program. It is a demonstration of India's capabilities in developing and operating complex spacecraft. The SPADEX mission will also provide valuable data and experience that can be used in future human spaceflight and space exploration missions. So what are some challenges in establishing sovereign space stations? Well, setting up independent space stations comes with a range of challenges and concerns. So the chief among these is the substantial financial commitment needed, as maintaining the ISS alone cost NASA approximately $3 billion each year. Furthermore, achieving the necessary technological capabilities for constructing and running a space station is a significant hurdle. For example, Russia's possible exit from the International Space Station emphasizes the intricate roles that various space agencies have in activities such as orbit adjustments and crew transportation. This complexity can create challenges for a single country attempting these tasks independently. In addition, the ongoing space race raises worries about heightened space debris, which could jeopardize critical satellites. So concerns also extend to the potential weaponization of space and the risks associated with militarizing it. Alarmingly, the prospect of space conflicts has been raised, prompting scrutiny and concern. For example, China's Tiangong station, equipped with a robotic arm, has prompted the US to express concerns about its possible dual-use nature in grappling satellites. So friends, why do we need sovereign space stations when we can establish bases on the moon? There are a few reasons why we might still need sovereign space stations. Firstly, sovereign space stations can be used for a variety of scientific research that is not possible 
on the moon. For instance, sovereign space stations can be utilized to investigate the impacts of microgravity on the human body and to pioneer novel technologies for space exploration. They also provide a platform for conducting experiments in the fields of astronomy and astrophysics. Secondly, sovereign space stations can be used for commercial purposes that are not possible on the moon. For example, sovereign space stations can be used to manufacture products, to provide telecommunication services and to offer tourism. Thirdly, sovereign space stations can be used for military purposes that are not possible on the moon. For example, sovereign space stations can be used to monitor Earth, to launch satellites and to conduct surveillance. In addition, sovereign space stations can be used to provide a staging ground for missions to other planets. For example, astronauts could launch from a sovereign space station to Mars or to other destinations in the solar system. So will there also be private space stations in the near future? In fact, several companies are developing or have already launched private space stations including Axiom Space. Axiom Space is developing a commercial space station that is scheduled to be launched in 2024. Well, the station will be located in low Earth orbit and will be capable of supporting up to 10 astronauts. Orbital Reef Orbital Reef is a commercial space station that is being developed by a consortium of companies including Boeing, Redwire Space and Sierra Nevada Corporation. The station is scheduled to be launched in 2027. Gateway Foundation The Gateway Foundation is developing a commercial space station called the Gateway Foundation. The station is designed to be a self-sustaining community in space and is scheduled to be launched in 2025. Well, these private space stations are expected to offer a variety of commercial and research opportunities. They could be used for tourism, research, manufacturing and other purposes. The development of private space station is a significant milestone in the commercialization of space. It is a sign that the private sector is increasingly involved in space exploration and that space is becoming more accessible to businesses and individuals. So friends, the future of space exploration is likely to involve a mix of public and private initiatives. Private space stations will play an important role in this future, providing a platform for commercial and research activities in space. So what kind of technologies have been designed in space stations? Space stations have been instrumental in advancing various technologies. Here are some examples. Material science. Microgravity conditions allow scientists to study the behavior of materials without the influence of Earth's gravity. This has led to advancements in materials used for electronics, medicine and other industries. Next is biomedical research. Space stations provide insights into the effects of microgravity on the human body leading to research on bone density loss, muscle atrophy and other physiological changes. This research contributes to medical knowledge on Earth as well. Well, next is pharmaceuticals. Studying protein crystallization in microgravity has helped improve drug development processes leading to more effective medications on Earth. Next, agricultural research. Experiments on space stations have led to an improved understanding of planet growth in microgravity, which has applications in developing more efficient agricultural techniques. Next is fluid dynamics. Observations of fluid behavior in microgravity have contributed to understanding fluid dynamics, which has implications for engineering and industrial processes. Well, next is advanced manufacturing. 3D printing and additive manufacturing have been tested on space stations leading to advancements in manufacturing techniques that can be applied on the Earth. Well, next is telecommunications, satellites and communication technologies developed in space stations have improved global communication, navigation and weather forecasting systems. Next is Earth observation. Space stations offer a unique vantage point for Earth observation enabling the monitoring of weather patterns, natural disasters and environmental changes. Next is research in space stations has provided insights into combating muscle loss, bone density decline and other health issues that astronauts face 
during extended space travel. Next is energy generation. Space stations have tested advanced solar panels and energy generation systems, contributing to the development of more efficient renewable energy technologies. Next is extraterrestrial resource utilization. Space station experiments have explored the feasibility of mining and utilizing resources from celestial bodies such as the Moon and asteroids. These are just a few examples of the diverse range of technologies that have been researched and developed on space stations, demonstrating their significance in advancing scientific knowledge. So who writes the rules on the final frontier? The rules and regulations governing activities in space are established through a combination of international agreements, treaties, national laws and the efforts of various space agencies. Well, let's take a look at the primary framework for space law is provided by a few key treaties. Firstly, the Outer Space Treaty, adopted in 1967 by the United Nations, the OST forms the foundation of international space law. It asserts that outer space is free for exploration and use by all the countries and it prohibits the placement of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction in the space. Additionally, it establishes that the moon and other celestial bodies are not subject to national appropriation. Secondly, the Moon Agreement. Adopted in 1979, this treaty expands upon the principles of the Outer Space Treaty and specifically addresses the Moon and other celestial bodies, use and exploration. However, major spacefaring nations have not widely ratified this agreement. Thirdly, the Rescue and Return Agreement. This agreement requires parties to provide assistance to astronauts in distress and return them safely to Earth. Fourthly is the Liability Convention. This treaty addresses issues of liability for damage caused by space objects to other states or their space objects. Fifthly is the Registration Convention. It establishes the obligation to register space objects and provides a framework for sharing information about objects launched into the space. Sixthly is the Space Debris Mitigation Guidelines. While not legally binding, these guidelines provide recommendations for the mitigation of space debris, aiming to ensure the long-term sustainability of outer space activities. So while these international treaties lay the groundwork for space activities, Individual countries also establish their own national space laws and regulations. Space agencies like NASA and ESA also play a role in setting operational guidelines for their activities. As commercial space activities grow, governments are adapting and creating new regulations to address issues such as commercial spaceflight, satellite deployment, space tourism and asteroid mining. So, friends, in conclusion, we can say the dynamic and evolving nature of space activities presents ongoing challenges in governing the final frontier. With the emergence of new technologies and increased engagement of countries and companies in space activities, the importance of international collaboration becomes paramount. The development of comprehensive and effective space regulations is crucial to guarantee the responsible and sustainable utilization of outer space. We hope you found this episode as captivating as we did in creating it for you. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. See you soon.